Hello and welcome back. Today on Patriot Contraptions, I am building the Flight Test Simple Cup. Now, normally on my channel, I build things that are my own design, but Let's face it, the Simple Cub is a legend in and of itself. This is a beautiful trainer plane from everything I've heard, and I thought, why not come on here, try to build it, and see how hard it actually is to do from scratch. So what I have in front of me, as you can see, I've already cut out all the parts. I'm not going to bother showing you guys just how to cut out foam and everything. They've got phenomenal videos, and a huge shout out to Flight Test. They have done just a phenomenal job with their videos and everything, showing you the entire build process. I'm just going to be showing you the final assembly and putting this together. I did build this entirely from scratch. I got the plans, I got some foam, and I drew it all out on the foam and then cut everything out. So kind of hard to draw out these plans. They do sell a kit for this, and there's a huge case to buy the kit because um, it's only 36 bucks. So you're saving, I'd say at this point, it's taken me about three to four hours to draw and transfer all these plans onto the foam. Now for me, I enjoy doing that. Uh, for you guys out there, if you're stressed on time, they do sell a kit that I've heard is really, really good. So that being said, let's get into the assembly. So I'm going to be assembling the fuselage first because I just wanna see the fuselage in shape. So I'm gonna move all this other stuff off to the side. We have our tail here. The two wings are off to the side up there. You can't really see them. The power pack, I still have to find a front end for that. We have the front end cover, and here are our fuselage reinforcements we're going to be using right now. And this would be the bottom of the fuselage. Then I have the tail, and I think that's pretty much it. There are a couple of wing guides and then the wing spars up on top. So, um, this is kind of hard to do because I don't have the kit. So. I've got to figure out how to line this up. And I'm going to kind of eyeball it. I'm going to take the two spacers that are used for the spars, put them down at the bottom, and just put one foam space from each side here. And that should give me my estimates, the correct alignment for these, because you've got to fold the bottom of this up. So I'm going to mark the corner here and the front. There we go and it'll show me where I'm gonna put it. Now it's time to take my glue gun, put some glue on it, and stick down our first reinforcement section. It's time to speed up time and fly into the future as we work at gluing the pieces into position. Now our reinforcement pieces are identical on both sides, or symmetrical, which means we don't need to show both sections in this video. So as you can see, I've finished mounting this section, and then for the next clip, the other section will be complete. I'm going to do that the entire way through this process simply for the sake of time. What I'm doing now is folding up the fuselage wall. The fuselage wall needs to be perpendicular to the top of the aircraft or the bottom in this clip as we are working upside down. In order to do this, I take my triangle and I hold it up against the side wall to make sure everything is nice and perpendicular. I then repeat this process on the other side. Now, after the sides are done, we take the bottom section of the plane and glue it on as well. If everything's nice and perpendicular and you've done your measurements correctly, this should line up pretty well. In my case, it did, so I went ahead and glued it down. There's only one more step to do to the actual fuselage, and that's glue in the piece on the front and wrap it around by sort of holding the airplane up and rolling it back and forward. This is mainly a decorative piece, but I think it looks nice, so I went ahead and added it. Also, we need to mount in place the windshield. So you take the windshield, fold it down, and glue it. Pretty simple. At this point, the fuselage is complete, and I'm going to hand the microphone back over to Realme, who is test fitting and checking the tail section to make sure it's perpendicular. Just double check it. I want to triple check this because if I get this wrong, the whole airplane is going to cant sideways on me. I don't want that. Apparently, Realme wasn't feeling very talkative, so I'm going to explain what's going on. In the simple cub, there are two slots that the tail section slides into to for the stabilizers. 
Now, in order to adjust this, what I had to do was trim the slots either on the top or the bottom to make it fit the stabilizer and keep it perfectly perpendicular to the main fuselage of the airplane. In order to ensure this, I used my straight edge to both align it vertically and horizontally as best I could with the fuselage. Now, back to real me. And now it's time for the tail. The tail on this is really cool to look at. It's got that nice notch out. And that notch out, I think, is supposed to fit around this piece right here. So, it should go on something like that. But nothing is ever that simple. So I had to do a lot of trimming on the tail section to get it to fit properly into the fuselage. And at this point, what I don't know is why I have to do all this trimming. So it got a little frustrating as I was very, very careful when I laid out the plans and made sure to cut them out precisely along the blueprints. The problem is what I wasn't careful about was when I downloaded the plans. The, see, the plans are one to one. They're eight and a half by 11 plans. What I did was when I put them in and I sent them to the printer, the printer automatically formatted the plans down in size to fit the preset margins I had for printing. Now, when it did that, it shrunk the entire plane. However, it didn't shrink it evenly. So the pieces didn't quite line up precisely. However, it was close enough that the end model flew just fine. But if you go and print the plans out, be sure to turn off your printer margins. It will make things a lot easier. At this point, my video camera went and malfunctioned on me, turning itself off. So we're going to skip ahead a little bit and go to putting in the tail section. I apologize there, the camera stopped and I don't have a cameraman, so I didn't notice it right off the bat. That being said, I did get the tail mounted, as you can see. Turned out looking pretty good. Now, what I did figure out while the camera was down is that front flap here folds under and it's just for looks. It kind of sticks on the bottom, so I did that. I also trimmed out the inside of the fuselage nose here, taking off the extra scrap. And I poked the knife through from the inside out to show where my landing gear is going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the bottom sections out now, just so I can see where they are for the landing gear. And then we'll be moving to the end. Okay, got our two slots for our landing gear now. I think it's time that we move over to the wing. Time to start on the wings. So this is the spar that runs down the inside of them. I've already got it cut. This is going to be using what they call an A-fold, which means the sides are going on top of the bottom. So let's give this a try. Building the wing spar was very straightforward and simple. Simply put glue on both sides and fold the sides up into position. Now, one thing you will notice here is that I have, in addition to the single spot cut out in the middle, I also have the two servo spots cut out on either sides, which yes, I will be installing ailerons on my simple cup. Now, I won't necessarily be flying with them, however, and one thing they don't tell you is that you can install these servos and then not plug them in, so you can still fly it as a three channel, even though you've got it set up for a four, potentially. What I do next is I take the wings and I lay them side by side together on the table, nice and flat, and then I tape them along the top of the wing, not the bottom, only the top. I then flip the wings over and I glue the spar down to the what's going to be the inside of the wings. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Before that, I need to glue the two wing sections together, and this is where that tape comes in on the top of the wing. It prevents the glue from going through the other side and ensure it gets a nice strong bond just between the two pieces of foam on either side. After which, I then fold over the two spacer sections of foam on the bottom portion of the wing, which will then create a little gap where we'll have our ailerons be able to flutter up and down. Now, as you can see, it's time to actually put in place the spar section of our wing. And you'll notice that alignment issue right here as it sticks out both sides a little bit. I decided to leave that just for strength, but I could have trimmed it off to make it fit more with the plans as they're intended to be. However, I'm not going to do that. I want the extra strength. So it's glued in place and everything looks real good. It's time to fold the wing over. And you'll notice here that it's creasing all in the same sections. That's because you pre-cut along part of the foam, just halfway through, in order to make the wing fold nice and easy. 
Once the wing is dry, I can then go ahead and trim through the tape and make sure I've got the holes clear for the servo and for the wires coming out of the servos into the main fuselage of the airplane. Next off, I move to the top of the wing. Because this plane has a V-shaped wing, what you do is you take the two spacers for the wing gap and you put them under the tips of the wing and then you trim the gashes in the center top of the wing to form that V-shape and allow the foam to fold around those gashes. Now once the gashes are at the correct angle and adjusted right, you put tape over them and it maintains that position permanently in place. At this point, if you're like me, you're probably going to take the wing and put it on top of the fuselage just to see what it looks like. That's really looking like an airplane now. And I couldn't have said that better because I guess I did say it technically. So the wing and fuselage are now complete. It's time to move on to the battery tray, which is the final process. And that's just taking it and size checking it against the fuselage and then going ahead and gluing it together by putting two beads of glue down either side and then a piece of scrap foam in the back of it to complete it. At this point, I would normally install the firewall on the power pad as well, but I don't actually have a firewall yet. I have to go out and buy some plywood to make it. So here we have the uh, finished foam part of the plane. I've got to install all the radio gear still and I've got to do some minor stuff to the power pack. I've got to make a front piece for that, but looks really good. I like how it turned out. Um, at this point, I go on a long rant about how I missized the plans, but you've already heard all of that. So I'm going to skip ahead and actually show you my first successful flight with the Simple Cub in order to cut the time down on this video. And I'll make a video later on about how I actually balanced the Simple Club, how the servos worked, and give you a review of how it actually has lasted up to all my many crashes. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I'm Patriot Contraptions, and I will see all of you in the next episode. Have a fantastic day. Signing out.